Okay, so here's my little tutorial on how to make these little collages. So first of all, you gotta have all the images you wanna use downloaded. And you'll click place and then start with your background image. So this one is the image I took. And I'm placing it, but it's way too big. So you, this might happen to you. Just drag it to the side a couple of times until you find the corner. And then click on that little uh, handle there, hold shift and drag it and make it smaller. And then I'm just making it smaller, moving it up a little bit, making it smaller, moving it up a little bit. As long as you hold shift while you're resizing it, it won't get squished really tall or really flat or anything. So I'll just get it the right size. Okay. And now, um, once I've got it to the size I want, I'm going to image trace it because it just doesn't really look that great as it is right now. So I'm just going to click image trace. And by default, I think it does black and white, which is like that. So over here, I'm going to change the default and say six colors. So instead of converting it to just black and just white, it's going to um, reduce the image down from like the millions of colors that it already is into just six. And depending on how big your picture is, it might take a little while. But I like to trace the images because it's a lot, it's kind of a quick and easy way to make them look unified if you're collaging a bunch of stuff together. If they're all image traced, they'll have a similar style and uh, just kind of makes it look like you had it all planned out from the beginning. So there, it's done. And the next thing I'm going to do is set its opacity. And so over here, there's a little two wheels, and I'm going to click and change its opacity to about 50%. I like that because then when you add things on top of it, it's really clear what's the background and what's not the background. And in these ads, we're trying to feature this design we're making. So here I made a mistake and I resized it again, and it has to go through and retrace the whole thing. And so I just sit here and wait until it's done retracing. Okay, so now I'm going to add a new layer and the layer that has the image in it, this one layer one, I'm gonna click this little blank spot and lock it so I don't actually accidentally move it around anymore. Then I'll select layer two and that's where I'm going to place my next picture. So I went and found this image of a bench that looks cool online and I'm just gonna place it. There it is. So now, so that they look unified, what I'm gonna do is uh, you can't work with it right now, like you can't just go in a race and do stuff with it. So what I like to do to unify those images, you click on it, image trace again, and you can, there's a little shortcut, instead of clicking image trace first, there's a little drop down menu. I'm going to pick 16 colors. Sometimes when you're trying to show detail, six colors doesn't quite do it, and so 16 comes out with a little bit more fidelity. So then from here, now that I've got it traced, I'm going to use the lasso tool. Well, actually not the lasso tool. Um, you can, after it's been expanded, let me click expand. Now each of those spots that it traced is its own little shape and I can click individual ones. And this is nice because I can just click them and, and then hit delete on my keyboard. And so I'm just going to delete these ones that I don't want. Because what I want is the background and I want to make it look like this bench is in the background picture that I added. So I'm just going to cruise around and get rid of all these little background pieces. And sometimes the just the rectangle selection like I'm doing here is kind of obnoxious. So you can use the lasso tool over there. And then it lets you just click and hold and draw an irregular shape and then delete. And see how it's got, I didn't actually highlight that corner over there, but when I hit delete, uh, that part stays highlighted. So if I hit delete twice, it'll delete all those pieces. So here I'll highlight this one, hit delete, everything I circled gets deleted. And when I hit delete again, everything attached to it gets deleted. But there's kind of a problem here. Somehow I deleted all that lady's hair and face and stuff. So it looks like that big black shape has is like background and has her hair in it. And so now with it selected, I'll click the eraser tool. And I'm just going to kind of erase. Like Since I don't have that selected, I can't erase that. But what's selected will get erased. So I'm just going to kind of trace out what looks like the top of her head to me. I don't know. Kind of put that in there like a little shape. Uh... And when I've erased it, now it's going to split it into two separate shapes. So I can I can delete the leftovers, and then that black part that made her hair is still there. You may need to do that, or you may not. You can just keep going through and erase all these.
Okay, cool. So now I'm going to back out of this layer by clicking this little arrow here. And when I click this, I don't get just an individual. I see the whole thing. And I'm going to resize it. And if I'm not holding shift, you can see I can squish it and make it flat or make it too tall or whatever. But if I hold shift, um, yeah, like that you don't want. But if I hold shift, it'll I can't squish it. It'll stay the same size so their heads won't get all smashed or anything. So I'm just going to kind of place it looking at the background image that's still there. I'm going to kind of try and place it in my uh, picture and I can rotate it. Looks like it would sit. I'm like pretending that it's actually sitting in the space there. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little too small still. Cool. So now uh, I'll back into this layer. That's what it looks like. And um, when I click the text tool and just click once somewhere, I'll just start. I can just start typing. You don't need to make a text box. You can just click once and then start typing. And what's cool about that is once you're done typing, go back to the selection tool and you can just resize it as you want. Whereas if you had made a text box, it would just make the box bigger, but the text would stay the same size. Stay the same size. It's a minor thing. So I'm going to add my text to my little description. So right here, if you go to view and over rulers, you can show the rulers if they're not already showing. Right here, I was just wondering how big is that text actually? And it's only like, you know, it's super small. And so I decided to just set it to 16 point, you know. The same as like if you're writing a paper and it's 12 point font, setting it to 16 point is like super readable. Uh, right here, I was just getting a little creative. I copy and pasted the text I'd already made. And then uh, using the dropper tool, which is uh, right down, where is it? There it is. You can just click colors in your image and it'll set the thing you had selected previously to that color. So just to kind of get like a consistent color scheme throughout, I just clicked around and found a color that looked good. And with two copies of the same text overlaid and one behind darker than the one in front, it kind of looks like a little shadow. That's Then just the last thing is you'll go ahead and make sure you've got it saved, but then click export on this menu. And um, the reason we do this is so that you can save it as a JPEG. And so you export it as a JPEG, JPEG. And when you click export, you'll get another menu. And make sure you change the color model to RGB if it hasn't been. Because if it's not RGB, then the printer won't print it in the correct color scheme. Then just click OK, and it should be done.